Greetings, my meatlings, Ursinus, and welcome back to episode 6 of our Civ 5 Timurid Let's Play. We are on the verge, the very verge, of seeing if we are going to get the Oracle, which will be very exciting. Beyond that, we're getting ready to plop down our fifth city. We have just plopped down our fourth city, and then we can decide how to approach the rest of the world. Peaceful, diplomatic, or warlike relations. We will see. But first and foremost, we will see if we get this wonder, and it looks like the city-state's turns have rolled over, which means we are going to get us some wonderage starting at the very beginning of the next turn, and that is oh so exciting right now. And that's great. Look at that. Oh, the Oracle. Beautiful. Beautiful. One of my favorites, uh, because A, you can actually get the darn thing, and B, because it gives you free social policy, which, uh, you know, it is pretty early, so it's not that uh, expensive policy-wise to get one, but hey, listen, anything that helps me finish off tradition quicker and get those aqueducts in the city is good on me. And this will obviously open up a lot more flexibility later for which policies we want to go down, whether we want to go down patronage, aesthetics, commerce, piety, honor, whatever. So, a free policy, nothing to sniff at. Extra great scientist points, uh, nothing to sniff at. Plus three culture, additionally, no sniffing permitted. Uh, this is a nice wonder. It's not the world's greatest, most impressive wonder, but it is a solid one, and I'm glad to have it. Glad we went out and took the risk, because, trust me, there's always a risk of you getting shot down and some other devious little AI getting their grubby little hands all over your oracle. But now, that sounded kind of dirty, but now that we have it, it's all ours, and we will love it and keep it for ourselves. So, yep, Writer's Guild is next, just so we can probably enact that decision related to the Writer's Guild I've been talking about, promoting the Chagatai literature, and get another boost of free culture. So, yeah, this is, this is good. We're in a great position, culturally and everything. And no, I'm not bloody well trading culture for money. Honestly, really, stop asking. All right. Huh. So we're bringing back our trireme from its South Pole journey. Those guys must be so cold right now. They came out of a place of plains and deserts, and they're just freezing their tails off on this crappy little boat. Um, I'm going to go around Riga here just to see what's out here. Obviously, there's a camp there. Obviously, that's going to be a problem at some point, but we will deal with it when we come to it. Uh, we're getting up our other cargo ship here, so that'll give us two trade routes, and we will be doing quite well, honestly. Our finances are pretty good. We're going to get a little another boost of finances here, uh, and yeah. I'm happy. This is this is starting off to be a pretty good LP as far as us not dying within turn two, which you know that's that's good. That's that's an improvement. That is progress as far as I see it. Uh, let's see, five tiles here, one, two, three, four, five tiles here for the road to Merv. So we'll probably do that. Boom. Okay, this is another event from the Events and Decisions mod, and this is why I love these things because this is a hugely interesting one. I think. A great artist, known throughout the world for the magnificent marble sculptures of our greatest heroes, has recently met a grisly end. Uh, in their will, left behind the work is a testimony to the enduring character of the Empire. Ah, that is a noble and honorable citizen. Some of these works would be worth a hefty value to the right buyer, but they could also stand for the purpose for which they were created. Let's see. Sell the art. 120 gold. That's 10 turns worth of gold. That's not huge. We must take care and put this have this art put into storage so you gain a lump sum of 44 culture and you lose 80 gold or wow you lose 140 but we gain a free great work of art early tourism yes please thank you I will have that look at that I've never seen this art before so cool first time I've ever gotten that one but uh, that's awesome, because that gives us two tourism, a culture boost, and I don't mind paying 140 gold for two tourism early. That is fantastic. We don't even have our guilds up here. We already have a great work of art. So that's awesome. And Summercon is pumping out 14 culture, total of 24, outside of a golden age. Yeah. Events and decisions is cool sometimes. When they do, when there's good ones, they don't bite you in the ass too bad. Uh, when there's not so good ones, they have a tendency to kill you. So, you know... All in all, on balance, a pretty good mod. I love it. Needle things like that, that'll help you get going in your playthrough other times. You know, it'll be less useful, but hey, that was a great one. I'm happy. That was very cool. Where are we going now? We are going up here to clear off the fog. The fog of the unknown. The fog of war. 
Maybe the Japanese will allow me through their borders. I think there's going to be like three city-states down here. But I'm going to see if I can clear out this area first. Maybe we'll find another natural wonder or something. So these roads are pretty much done. I think... Uh, how close are we? Do we need to improve some more tiles for people in Summit Gun to work? Yeah, I think so. Honestly, we need to get uh, some farms up. So as much as I want to keep continuing these roads, I do really need some more farms. So I will get moving on that. Uh, freshwater farms, though. With two production. This will be... Actually, let's start building these up. Hey, why not? We're about to get civil service, right? This is going to be really soon. Two turns. Oh, heck yeah. What is this? T to Oda. And we just renewed that last time, didn't we? Tell me we renewed that last time. Oh, he lost his T, didn't he? I mean, his Jade. Oh, Attila! Why did you do that? I was at such good happiness, and now I'm not. Oh, but I can trade for Monty. Trade Monty for some... What is that? That is tobacco. Yeah, we went from Jade to killing our people with lung cancer. Whatever. It's a luxury, as long as they like it. I am not one to judge the market. The market is morally neutral. Yeah, okay. Don't I sound crass. Okay. Ghazni is good at five. Ghazni, sorry. Stop making it sound... Uh, I just... Yeah, me, me and the names. Me and the city names. I'll go far. One day I'll go far. Yes, great collection of art left of the states. We put it in public display, and we have more tourism now than pretty much... I mean, a lot of people probably more tourism than us. Let's see. Yeah, we're at two tourism. The Inca are at four, and we're the only players in the world tourism game right now. That's pretty cool. I love those lucky, lucky little events and decisions. But as you can see, we're only nine happiness, and we're going to drop another city that's minus four. Three for the city and one for the pop. And we're going to keep growing, so this number is going to deplete super quick. Which means we're really going to have to focus on getting our Coliseums, our Circus Maximus, any, any circuses we can just to get that and stabilize that a little better. Because we are going to be running a little low. We're, gonna, we're expanding really hard right now, and that is going to be a cost in and of itself. Now, when we hit the Renaissance, you need to go rationalism. I mean, there, as much as I hate saying that, uh, rationalism really is the, the one thing that'll keep you up in science and help you exceed the AI in science because of their start. And rationalism is just way, way too strong. You need a great scientist to be start being generated, and this is the only way to get more science as far as policies go, really, beyond just some random ones here, like that one. Uh, so yes, when you hit rationalism, <laughs> try that again. When you hit rest in Renaissance, you will hit rationalism. You will open that policy tree and go down as far as you can. In the interim, this whole kind of dead space between when you finish your tree or if you're working on another tree between medieval and renaissance that's when you can kind of go a little bit and dip into some of these other trees um right now i don't think honor is going to be that worthwhile unless i go like four policies in which there's no way i'm going to make it i think in the time i get to renaissance which is not that many techs off honestly um because i'm probably going to go to education next and i may beeline acoustics um or astronomy so i can get the frigates early or something Probably acoustics, honestly. It's the quickest way in. Go to the Renaissance, do that, and that's maybe, what, 14, 20, 21 turns worth of science. So 21 turns, and every policy is going to be about, well, let's see, I don't know, probably 10 or 12 turns. So that's not that many. So that's one or two policies tops that I can probably get. Um, and that means that we're going to be limited to either the opener and something else or two openers. Now, the strongest openers... Uh, what, commerce is pretty good because 25% gold output in the capital and if your capital's got a lot of trade routes in the East India Company that can add up hella quick and it lets you open the Big Ben which pretty much no one ever builds which reduces I think purchase costs in the city so that's pretty cool it's uh, kind of almost a free wonder because no one ever builds Big Ben it's pretty crazy none of the AIs really go commerce uh, patronage is always good no matter what you're doing. Uh, it's not the strongest opener, but it's really nice because basically your influence degrades 25% slower, which basically makes your life easier no matter when you give money or do anything for the city-states, any kind of quest is completed. All that culture you, uh, all that rep you received goes away 25% slower. So this is really good no matter what you're doing, military or otherwise, unless you're really going hard on for honor. And just the patronage opener is pretty good. And it opens the Forbidden Palace, which is a great wonder. It's one of my favorites, especially when you have big cities that aren't occupied. Uh, like, we're going to have five. So 
getting the Forbidden Palace, which, you know, sometimes the AI does go for it. So granted, it's not a guarantee, but the Forbidden Palace is a sick good wonder. I love it. And especially late game when your cities start growing big and you start claiming big cities and annexing them, that is going to give you a lot of happiness. It reduces uh, unhappiness by 10% from non-occupied cities. So that's going to be huge. And aesthetics is a good opener too, just because writers, artists, and musicians go 25% faster and having extra great works, extra things to put in your great work slots. And, you know, that's a pretty cool opener as well. So I think the strongest openers, if you're just going to get the openers, probably commerce, aesthetics, or patronage. I'm going to hit patronage first just because I like the rep with city-states to retain just a little bit longer. And I really want the Forbidden Palace, especially if I don't have the chance to, up, uh, to adapt anything else before the Renaissance comes along. And we're going to keep going. All right. So we have this city connection done. We're making 18 gold a turn with just one trade right up, which isn't that lucrative. It's only three gold per turn, yeah. So 15 of this is from basically city connections, which is really cool. So in this case, Khazni, what else do you need? You are going to be getting fish and stuff later, so we need to get optics all up in there, get the lighthouse going, and that'll be fun. But either way, you are going to make a road to Merv, and once you are in Merv, you will start improving Merv, because Merv needs some improvement. I might just move him over first and get the road later, because that's going to make me a lot of money at the point anyway. Let's fix the sheep. Let's do the, let's do the Merv sheep. Merv sheep need help. Boom. All right. So we've got, yeah, this is this is going. Oh, bogey has got the Hanging Gardens. That's pretty cool. Uh, another reason to try and kill him. Where'd he build it? Capital. Of course. No worries. Because sometimes, oh, yeah, that's a little trick. If you click that and you know, know the city where it was built, it'll show you where it was built, uh, which is neat. So that's a nice way of figuring out which cities you want to take. Ha <laughs> ha. Go figure. All right. We have that farm done now. So Summer Con will grow just a little bit faster. And I don't know why it doesn't want to expand here. This is a perfectly good hill tile. It's like, ha, huh, it says a something about hill tiles. It's like, no thank you. I'd rather suffer. All right, we're in the medieval. We're probably the last ones to the medieval, but that's no big deal. We're still doing well uh, technology-wise. Yeah, it just does not want this desert hill for the life of the thing. It's like, no, 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 I don't want it. I don't want it. We will use you to build that road. I think this this is our road builder candidate. Number one. That way we can get that up. And here we go. More stuff to be revealed. Actually, not much there, actually. So we may have to get open borders from the Japanese sooner rather than later. And we will be going to optics next, so we can embark our guys. Uh, none the least of which is to get this T improved, so we have another thing to trade for money. But more so, optics gives us lighthouses, and when two, three of our cities, and soon to be four of our cities, are really going to need lighthouses for their food. This city is going to be almost entirely dependent on fish for food and production. Uh, well, mostly food. Production will be... There's a lot of hills here, actually. So yeah, lighthouses are going to be key. So that will be slotting into the production queue shortly thereafter. Herat's pretty much the only place we're not going to have a lighthouse, because it is not coastal. It is... Lakeal? I don't know. Literal? I'm not sure. The actual adjective for that. But that is next, and that is going to be on the production queue of all these cities as soon as we hit optics, and then we'll decide where to go from there. If we are actually going to go land warfare and get some trebuchets and go to town on Tenochtitlan, or if we're going to go naval and see if we can nip some of the Viennese dominance on the other side of the continent in the bud and take Vienna. I think that may be a good idea. Because if Austria isn't dealt with, they will start to get really strong and start buying up every single city-state in the game with their diplomatic marriage, uh, UA, and then you've got this crazy, crazy late game, like, super carry type sieve that just does not want to go away, because every time you get rep with a city-state, it's like, oh, I want that one, oh, I want that one, and then they just get huge and scary. So usually she gets wiped out by someone early because she d starts doing stuff like that, but sometimes she does not, and that's when she gets scary. So uh, another thing to think about is dealing with Austria, and that might be a good idea, honestly. Pocatello can get that way, but he tends to sometimes fall behind in tech, which is really funny after he gets his cavalry in it. So, you know, I'm not too worried about him going crazy. He doesn't have that much more room to expand, honestly, so and Monty's kind of keeping him blocked in. So going after Vienna might be wise, and then the Incas tend to go... I've seen more Inca runaways, I think, in my games than almost any other Civ, because just the economic bonuses they have from their UA are huge. Wow, this turn already. Damn, I got me some extra science somewhere. 
All right. So shall we? Shall we? Well, after you do this, unless you really need swordsmen to defend yourself, which is not a bad idea. I don't have any iron at this point anyway, so I'm going to do acoustics. Acoustics, good lord. Do education and probably do acoustics. And education, of course, is probably the key tech you want to get early on. Uh, after getting your libraries up in the National College, your next big science tech is, bam, education. And this is would normally be, for everyone else, a university. For us, it's the special building, the Maidan, like I said. Um, less production cost, and you get a couple other bonuses. It kind of acts as a mini constabulary. It gives your trade routes a 10% increase in range. I'm assuming that applies to sea routes, too, so that'll be useful. So this is a must-have, and you should get to education and get your libraries up ASAP, unless you're very much in a war, in which case you might want to go here, but then shortly after, go to education. But right now, since we are relatively peaceful for the moment, we will hit education, we will get those universities up, and then we will really start uh, teching up pretty hard, getting all those nice, nice, powerful units to play with from all our massive technology boosts. Okay, cool, so I get to see what's over here, too. Maybe there's another city-state. That scout is doing work. He's honestly doing a hell of a job helping me figure out what is going on everywhere else. Another set of ruins. Good, I really gotta get a unit over here. Damn. I think... Oh, I have optics now. Yes! Okay, yes. I'm getting a unit over here and getting those ruins, because that's gonna be just a lot of free stuff, I think. No one got those things. Damn. Alright. So that's... <laughs> this is gonna be like jungle island exploration. This is gonna be awesome. This, this archer is officially known as Indiana Jones. This is gonna be great. Why'd it have to be snakes? All right. I'm not the last one in the medieval. Ho ho! Yay! Okay, good. So I'm not I'm not the slow one at the table. Isabella is still a little behind. Uh, <coughs> pardon me. Time to take a sip of some vino. Hold on. Mm, much better. Okay. I am not the slow kid at the table. Maria is the last one to the to the trough the trough of science. All right, we've got the writers guild up, which is awesome. And now I think at, on cue. Right on cue, enact decisions. Exactly what I was just about to say. Thank you, AI. Promote Jagatai literature. Only cost is one magistrate, and I got six of those bums, so we might as well use them. All right, and look at this. The later we went in uh, eras, we got 75 culture now instead of just 50 or 55 that we had as the initial offer since we are now in the medieval. I probably don't want to put this off any longer, honestly, so I will do this now, but a nice lump sum boost of 75 culture plus extra great writer points. Yes, please. Thank you. So that is nice. And until we get uh, some sort of trade routes from other people, this one is going to be a little while until we adopt, but that's not exactly the single most important thing on the planet. But that's nice. So we've got uh, Chagatai literature being enacted, and that is pretty cool. All right, so we are finishing that trade vessel there. So let's just start building up our cow. Wow, you know, this is, the, this is the temptation. When you're peaceful, you almost want to just... See if you can keep spamming, spammy, spammy, spamming uh, wonders. And, you know, I'm going to give into the temptation, honestly, because <laughs> I don't think Chichen Itza is really popular and some AI is going to get it. Petra, on the other hand, is dependent on whether AIs actually started near desert. And I don't think anyone else did, honestly. I might be the only... No, Monty got it. Monty's next to desert. He's in a lot of desert. Uh, she's not. So Monty looks like the only one, really, that could compete with us for Petra. Yeah. Well, you know, she's got a little bit there, but that's not a big production city. Hmm. The other thing is Petra is kind of a kind of an old wonder. Uh, it's been around for a little bit. So, I mean, same level as the Oracle, I guess. Oh, so tempting. Damn. I normally never have the opportunity, because usually these are gone by the time I even get to get to that level of tech and have that opportunity to go. But, you know, I'm going to resist the temptation to do Petra because it's not going to be a huge benefit for us either. I mean, plus one food, plus one production here is going to be nice. And on these, you know, it is going to be a benefit. Oh, I hate this. I hate this indecisiveness. Uh, let, you know what? Okay. Probably would never do this, but just for the sake of argument, let's see if we can actually get Petra because that would be cool because we do have some desert tiles and that would make them a little more fruitful and Samarkand uh, kind would could use some extra food and that would make these actually decent tiles. So, you know what? I'm going to bite the bullet, bite the Petra, bite the Wonder Bullet, and see if we can actually get some, some Wonderage up. All right, and see, there we go. Rock of Gibraltar. How many more natural wonders? I have found all natural wonders in the game this early. Wow, well, so much for all my happiness bonuses. That's about as good as we're going to get. All right, we got some, got some uh, 
angry little barbs there, but we have also some ruins. Now, this, see, this isn't worth settling at all, because it's not a unique luxury. I think, I'm 90% certain, Pokey's going to drop a settler there. Uh, but it makes him sound like a cartoon character from a kid's show, doesn't it? It's like, Pokey, the happy person. I don't know. What, what would his character be? I don't even know what kind of <laughs> gender or species he would be. Sounds like a small miniature pig, doesn't he? Pokey the pig. I'm not sure. I'm going to stop talking now and get Petra out. All right. Next turn. Boom. Marv still building the library. Chesney is still building the cargo ship. And... Ah, oh, crap. Well, looks like uh, Monty, Monty is thinking about some militaristic action all up in here. Possibly all up in our grills. Aren't you attacking Spain or something? Here, let's see if we can pay Monty to attack Spain so we can get off our back. Hey, friend! I see your military near me. <laughs> this is such a cheeky little git. All right, you want to declare, I don't know, Isabel. You want one of my wonders and open borders. Uh, one of my wonders. One of my luxuries in open borders, huh? So that's not going to cost me that much. And he could do that. What about Pocatello? Would Pocatello declare war on Monty, maybe? Just in retaliation, and that way we can kind of keep going on this? Declare war on Montezuma, just to get him off our back. No, nah, he don't want to. How about Isabella? He is a heathen, Isabella. He does not follow the teachings of the church. Would you want to go after him? Come on. No. Okay, well, let's let's point Monty in another direction. How much happiness do we have? Nine. Giving him that extra silver. Ooh, that would be really bad for our expansion possibilities right now, too, because, yeah, we won't have that silver up anytime soon. Hmm. Wow, decisions, decisions. Uh, maybe I can... Wait, do we have extra tea? Does he want... Oh, we're already trading him tea, that's why. Nikak. Yes, Nikak. Whatever the heck that means. Declare war on uh, Isabella. What do you want? Silver and open borders, declare war on Pokey. Do you want the same thing? He needs more to declare war on Pokey. Me think this guy is going to be a problem later. No, I'm going to declare on both. All right, so how about we give you, you horses? Do you want horses? Do you value horses? He does value horses. Okay. So how about we give you all our horses because we don't particularly need them. He keeps repeating the same thing for some reason. I'm not sure why. You want to do that? You want to declare war on Isabella for three horses, maybe? Keep one, just in case. No, but four horses? You want to do that? And what else you want? Wah, wah, wah. All right, no open borders, because that would be stupid. Because that would be doing exactly what I don't want to do. Three GPT, then. Come on. You can take this. Take this deal. Uh, maybe, maybe two. Does he really want to borders that bad? Yeah, okay, fine, fine, fine. Three. Eat it and choke on it. What? How much? Wow, you value open borders a lot, don't you? Come on. There we go. All right, point those military guys somewhere else. Come on, you declare war on Isabella because we don't want him to declare war on us. And that's how you keep a warmonger the hell away from you. Uh, just keep feeding him things, and he'll just leave you alone and start stabbing other people. In the interim, let's see what good trade routes we have. Samarkand to Timok, it'll give us three and three science. So I'm going full-on science and culture text, and he's going full-on military text. This is why it's going to be three and three of an exchange. So we're going to move you to Samarkand, and we're going to send this to Timok, and we're going to prosper mutually. That's going to be good. And it's also one of our most lucrative trades, too, so that's going to be really nice. Once that one gets rolling, like really, really gets proper rolling. Not much else out here, I don't think. Yeah, may <laughs> be funny if there's just like a shallow way all the way to the other continent, but... Alright. You. You were going to get ruins for me, weren't you? Yeah, you were. You were. Okay, settler time. Move you out here. Drop that city. Right where those... God, this AI, this game, is actually pretty good. Oh, I had a quest to discover a natural wonder. There we go. Now this is more like it. There's actually some quests up here before. That was the weirdest thing. Uh, and anything I'm kind of friendly with, I'm going to pledge to protect just to make sure I keep gaining a little bit of points and keeping those positive vibes flowing. I, Genoa wants coffee. You have a coffee quest. Who has coffee? Anyone have coffee? Any of the AIs, that is. Oh, Isabella has wine now. Awesome. Me thinks I'm going to trade her tea for wine. 
Hey, Isabella, let's lock this wine trade down. Perfect. You haven't gotten your jade back yet, have you? No, you haven't. All right, and that'll keep us level, and that way when we get another T up, we can actually uh, safely expand and not worry about getting crippled on happiness, which is good. I hate that. All right, Merv, you're going to need to build me a workboat. Oh, God. I think workboats are pretty cheap, honestly, but I do want to save some money to upgrade these guys into crossbows because just because Monty's declaring war on Isabella does not mean Monty's not going to declare war on us, and that would be really annoying. All right. That's going good so far. Going good so far? Yeah, now it's thinking otherwise. Yeah, you know, you know AI, that's a good thought. I might want to settle on that hill too, but uh, probably not. I will probably just do what I was planning. Uh, make sure we have a lot of productive tiles here. And make the one non-productive tile productive. So, that is the plan. Public declaration from Japan, now protecting Panama. Good for them. Good for them. Good on you, Japan. Good on you. Uh, what do we got here? Okay, your tiles are coming along nicely. See, this is a good tile city. You're being nice. Alright, we're going to move up here. And bam. Okay, I think this is pretty much done on the east, unless I want to go through Cusco at some point, which I will. Uh, but for now, I don't want to pay people for open borders. I don't have that much cash to throw around. So I'm going to hang out and see if I can get rid of as much of this fog as possible. I hope Isabella actually has some troops here to give Monty a hard time. I really hope he doesn't just... Overrun her, let's put it that way. <laughs> Overrun her with his legions, because that would be sad. Isabella is somewhat useful sometimes. Just a little bit. Notice I'm not staffing my Writer's Guild yet. Uh, 10 pop is a good kind of safe place for uh, judging whether you have time to staff two specialists. So 12 pop, really, with a set of four specialists is about the best or the minimum, the bare minimum, to support this and maybe university. So I want to grow a little bit, and since I'm getting extra great writer points as it is, and we're doing okay on culture, I'm not staffing it yet because I'm a little shy on food. Uh, but once we have more food and more production, uh, actually, let's relocate that, speaking of more food and more production, uh, that way we can kind of get this Petra out. As soon as we get this Petra out, I can worry a little less about keeping my production tiles really locked. But for now, I kind of do. I want to make sure we can get that out since we're really going for it. Uh, all right, you're done with this hill. Uh, can we get by this other tile? Because this is actually a really good tile, and I want to improve it ASAP. And you build another farm there. Because those two two and two tiles are really good early on. All right, we're going to Temok, were we not? Yes. Eight gold per turn. Nice amount of science. I like that. And we're going to keep going. Boom, boom. Those those uh, those ruins are still there. Am I going to get a free worker out of this? Ah, oh, this is going to be a good investment of time. I'm going to I'm going to save you there and then I'm going to throw you over. You don't even have the ability to embark, do you? Never mind. It's going to be a while. But as soon as I found the city, he will. So that's good. I'll found the city and throw him in the water. <laughs> and that sounds cruel, harsh but fair. Uh, but I will get him. I'll get these war ruins and maybe even get a free worker out of the mix. So that'll be really nice. And that'll be a good investment of my time. It'll save me from building a worker for this fifth city. So, darn. That would be awesome. Assuming Pocatello doesn't decide to, you know, send units there himself. Because he probably has optics already, anyway. No, I'm not settling there. I already picked where I settled. Stop confusing me. Stop giving me options. No. Options. No. Too many options. Freedom is the greatest tyranny. Isn't that what they say? That's what autocracies say, don't they? I should stop saying that. I'm not an autocracy. We're a democratic here. Not really. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a monarchy that's masquerading as a non-autocracy, but hey. This war between Attila... Are you guys still at it? Because you guys haven't done jack. You guys have not done diddly. Let's see. At war with Spain, because I paid them at war with the Huns because of the Huns. Okay, so they're still at it. Those people are still at it. And we are sitting peacefully up here just dropping cities going, Don't mind me. We're just, you know, getting ahead of all of you. Uh, Amphitheater's going to be done soon. Probably Colosseum, then I'll mark it, and then we'll worry about the rest. I'm not really going heavy religion this game. Um, I'll use that as a bonus, let's put it that way. If I have time to get some faith buildings later for great people, I will. At the moment, I don't particularly care. I'm going to make an alliance with a religious city-state sometime uh, by accident and get some faith that way. But uh, I sometimes play religiously, sometimes don't. Depends on the game. But that is the plan for now. All right. And someone else found a religion. This is the last one, maybe? Huns have founded Tengrism, obviously. They're the only ones that have that bonus. One more religion can be founded. So we'll see who does it. Usually this late, though, I'm surprised that all five aren't taken. Usually the last couple come in within, like, a turn of each other. Because everyone has, like, a, oh, my God, must have religion now kind of, kind of moment. All right. 
let's see. Monty's scout is still sitting there going, I wonder what else he's doing. But we are doing nothing. We are... <laughs> nothing? What? Don't ask us. We're just settling another city. What? No, no, no. We didn't say that. He might take offense to that. He might not be happy about that. But you know what? He can stuff it. Because we have choke points, and choke points win. Keep building the road. That Spanish scout really has to move at some point. Because this is impeding my <laughs> progress. Uh, you keep moving here. You keep moving here. And then... And then... Oh, you can't heal outside of friendly territory, can you? That's right. Unless you have supply. Makes ships uniquely annoying. Let's see. Do you still have units there? That... That... Uh, that one... One hand axe there just sitting there kind of going, I'm not doing anything. But we have two runes to get here. And this is likely going to be gold or some kind of religious revelation this late. I doubt it'll be culture, but it could be culture. Uh, that would be nice. A little benefit for us. Tiny little benefit for us. Pocatello got Notre Dame. Again, this is a wonder that the AI has a huge, huge tendency to go for. So he dropped a fourth city. Um, luckily not here, so I can still get the ruins. But he dropped it down here, which is kind of expected. It's safer that way. Uh, you are almost there. You're almost there. You're almost there. And you are not almost there. You I don't even know where you're going. You're going here. Oh, there's the battering ram. So I think the problem with Attila right now is he's having trouble moving his battering rams into the range of Kyoto without them getting picked the hell apart. Uh, which is the only reason Oda is still standing. Because sometimes when you see an AI next to Attila on like a pretty much a flat plane next to him, that's when you know it's game over. Like That AI is not going to last long at all. <laughs> At all. Oh, let's get on this hill first, because this one I know is going to move in, and I'm going to be angry. You went double production. That's good. You're still growing pretty quick. This city's growing actually heck of quick. Where are you getting all the food from? Oh, I know where you're getting the food from. It's all our friendships with the maritime city-states. This gives us food in our capital. Two food per turn in the capital, so there you go. There's our explanation. Well, five turns to Hill Petra. Getting some infrastructure up getting our fifth city down, <laughs> paying Monty to kill someone else. This is a fun game so far, and I hope you'll join me for the next session where we continue our infrastructure adventure, which is you know, not so exciting. But we may be getting into war soon, because I think Monty's not going to last long, and if we keep expanding here, he's just going to be like, I want those. And then we can see if we're actually going to do our massive Mongol-Turkic fleet idea, or just buy some cannons and kill Monty, which may be what we're doing. So... Hope you join me next time. We're going to keep rolling on this, and hope you're having fun with our Timurid thing. We've done some pretty cool stuff. We're about to get one of our Timurid specialty buildings, and we adopted some Timurid decisions, promoted some Chagatai literature, codified some laws, and we are moving on and moving along. Hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.